Tonight on Access TV, it's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Jeff Caldwell, Megan Hanley, Mike Faverman, Clinton Jackson. This week's host, Michael Winslow. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Winslow! Hey! How y'all doing? You know how to make noises, make some noise! How you feeling, New York? How you feeling, New Jersey? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Y'all ready to have a good time tonight? Well, let the comedians, let them, let them hear you in the back. Go on, you make some noise. Y'all ready for it? As you know, I make noises. Everybody makes noises. We all do this. You just don't want to share. That's the problem. We all make noises. We make sounds to describe something to someone. We make sounds to describe someone to someone else. And we make noises to explain to the state trooper what happened. And he has his own noise. Well, it's better than, <laughs> better than that. I learned some things coming to New York. Did you know that it is a crime to do the sound of the flight attendant call button on aircraft? <laughs> it is now my fault. I do not like to fly. I make the noise, but I do not like. <laughs> That's first class. <laughs> Hang on. I'm in the back by the engine. <laughs> I did that noise on the plane, man. I swear, the flight attendant got so mad. Well, she started it, she hit my kneecap with the cart. <laughs> you know what I mean, you know what's going on. Southwest. Is that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, is that your foot? Are you bleeding on my floor? Mm. Are you bleeding? You are bleeding. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> can I, um, can I get something complimentary? <laughs> Hang on, I'll get free straight away. <laughs> He's looking at my butt. He's looking at my butt. Um, no. sir, here's a complimentary bag of nut. Exactly. She did that to me and I said, okay, here's what you do. Wait. Sit in your chair and chill. Let her get about seven rows away. Don't say nothing. Just wait till she... She's seven rows away, man. Do this noise. <laughs> she will freak the hell out because she cannot find the light. That's good for 30 minutes if you play it right, y'all. <laughs> I swear, she's like,
<laughs> Tonight, I'm going to teach y'all how to make one noise. Would that be all right? Yeah. You will learn to make one noise. I'm going to teach you one sound. You will use it somewhere. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you get in trouble, my name is Chris Tucker. <laughs> I love that voice, Chris Tucker. What a voice. Chris Tucker, great voice, man. Chris Rock, too. Chris with cream, donuts. Chris with cream, hell no. Crack and cream. <laughs> this is why I'm not allowed in Home Depot. <laughs> because I can make the tools have the wrong noises. <laughs> I'm serious, man. I can get you anything off the shelf and make them think it's broken. <laughs> and it's still in the box. <laughs> I can also make tools vibrate, too. <laughs> Hey, girl. Hi. Guess what? I can do the sound of your toys. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah, you woohoo, you woo Yeah, I know why you're going woohoo, because you got that thing in your purse. <laughs> the pocket rocket. Okay, you ready to learn your noise? Yeah. Ready to learn your noise, everybody? Yeah. We'll make this easy, we'll make this easy. Before we start, I gotta, I gotta tell you, New York, I've had a great time in the restaurants. I had the best food in the world in New York. <laughs> Today, I got kicked out of three restaurants and I loved it. If you kick me out, I don't have to pay. So, here's what I did. Menu, please. I'll show you what I did. Little restaurant. Not just outside of Chinatown. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Were you cooking? It was a little small place. It was really, really small, you know? So I walk in. <laughs> the door hits me. <laughs> Back wall. Door. <laughs> this is the bigger place. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Hey, hey that's my jacket. Hello? Hello, welcome to a restaurant. So, I gave her the order. I ordered the chicken butt with the hot butt sauce. So you what? I want the chicken butt with the hot butt sauce. And I want the, uh... <laughs> on the side. <laughs> so, she goes in the restaurant, she goes in the back, and I do this. <laughs> You can laugh, you're not having fresh butt. <laughs> the cook comes out of the kitchen and goes, You, you will fight my brother. brother. I got, I got scared, scared, man. I didn't get scared. I got Richard Pryor scared. You know what that means? Oh, oh shit. Oh, I, I do not want you, you to kick, kick my, my ass. ass. Oh. Y'all having, having a good time? time. You enjoying yourself so far? Here's your sound. Here's the sound I want you to make. I want you to go to the store, get something off the shelf, go to the front counter. When the young lady turns to do something, do this. <laughs> you learn this noise, you ain't pay for nothing next Christmas. <laughs> right ain't gonna figure this out. <laughs> so. <laughs> if you get good at this, you can call it your own damn prices too. <laughs> Go to Walmart. Go to Walmart. Go to the self-checkout counter and go, free. 
$500 refund flat screen TV from Samsung free. And that's my set tonight, yo. Thank y'all very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Jeff Caldwell is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Our first performer of the evening has been seen on The Late Show with David Letterman. He gonna make some noise of his own. He got a great set. Make some noise for Jeff Caldwell. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I never actually had my hair fondled before I show up before. That is exciting. Thank you, Michael. And uh, thank you guys. Wow. Everybody enjoying a little adult beverage? Good? Yeah. We just ask you to please be responsible. I've got a friend who's in AA. Every month he stays sober, they give him a little poker chip, and now he has a gambling problem. So just be careful. I've never actually had anyone boo AA before. That is sad. That's a, that's a problem drinker right there. But it is good to be back in the city. I, uh, my wife and I moved out of New York a couple of years ago. Now we live out in a very secluded, wooded area on a big reservoir used for drinking water and recreation. <laughs> I've always felt if that's my drinking water, I'd prefer you not recreate in it, but uh, just run it through the Brita filter, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> we moved out a couple years ago during the, uh, the dark times when many of us were being persecuted simply for wanting to enjoy a couple 64 ounce sugary sodas after a meal. <laughs> I said, Michael Bloomberg, you can have my big gulp when you pry it from my cold, sticky hands. <laughs> Bloomberg, he was, he was on the board of my college when I was a student there, and I have to say, he uh, had very little effect on what we drank back then, too. So. <laughs> but I get it. He wants us to be fit. I'm all for that. I've been trying to drop a couple pounds, but... Someone decided it was a good idea to make tortilla chips shaped like scoops. <laughs> well, we weren't getting enough quantity into our mouths. We uh, needed some sort of edible shovel. Sure, I, I'd been using a garden spade for years, but this is a labor saver. They're trying to hurt us. I ate at a restaurant today. The server was wearing one of those weightlifter back support belts. That might be a sign your portions are too large. We need, need a spotter to get the entree onto the table. Is that a burrito or are we sandbagging a levee here? Es muy grande. The pizza people, they're playing hardball, right? Cheese in the crust? Okay, it's like that. Oh, a giant pizza sized chocolate chip cookie for after my pizza. Good idea. Yeah, I need some carbs to balance this out. Now they'd like us to dip it in some ranch dressing, too. Sure, oh, you gotta dip your pizza. Pizza gets so dry. Yeah. Huh? I had two slices, I got gout. It's a little rich. The gout lover's pizza, I should have known. My wife and I joined one of those giant wholesale membership club stores, and surprisingly, buying in bulk isn't helping us lose weight. <laughs> well, with what I save buying waffle mix by the pallet, I can afford my insulin. <laughs> no, a friend of mine said, you gotta get away from that white refined sugar, so, using honey now. <laughs> lots and lots of honey. <laughs> People wonder what's killing the bees. I think it's overwork. Yeah. <laughs> the 
Then we pass our crazy eating habits onto our young people. Now we have yogurt in a tube for kids on the go. Oh, uh, kids are too busy to learn how to eat like human beings, right? Yeah. I'm 17 and I can't use a spoon. I eat from tubes and drink from sippy cups. I'm on the go. Well, we'll hold on to your resume and let you know if anything comes up. Okay? I drink water like a hamster. Of course, they don't drink water, they drink the energy drinks, right? Energy drinks aimed at the teenage boy who just doesn't feel enough aggression inside of himself. Yeah, yeah, we've come up with a cocktail of powerful stimulants. Let's market it to people with no impulse control. This shouldn't turn out like Lord of the Flies at all. A little bit of caffeine in there. Well, you want to be alert to describe your symptoms to the cardiologist. <laughs> we didn't have anything exciting like that when I was a kid. We had Gatorade. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not tasty, but there always seems to be a full bucket to dump on the coach at the end of the football game, doesn't it? Yeah. That stuff's not moving. I try, I read my labels on the food, even beer. Try to pick a healthy beer. I love those German imports, right? They have the story right on the label. Brewed in strict accordance with the Bavarian purity law of 1516. Medieval hygiene standards, ah. Well, they didn't know about germs, but they were very wise in 1560. Many of them lived to be 30. Oh, the master brewers would skim the dead birds right out of the vat. Then they'd bottle it up for those who hadn't been rendered blind or insane by the last batch. Good times. They never brewed in the same kettle they'd killed the witch in. That was the rule. Real sticklers after 1516. Some people say, go farther back. Try that caveman diet. Oh, yeah, the caveman. That nutritional trailblazer. How did he say so trim? Well, I'm guessing it had something to do with running a mile from a saber-toothed tiger and grabbing a handful of poisonous berries. The pounds melt away. I don't know, folks. Maybe instead of looking back millennia for answers, let's use our technological edge, right? I got, uh, I synced my calorie counter app with my pedometer app, and it looks like I'm getting 40 miles per gallon of gin. That's pretty good, right? Hmm. I love that calorie app, right? But there is still the human element, that data entry. Huh? Let's see, I had a cereal bowl full of queso. That's uh, about a tablespoon, about a tablespoon full. Yeah, that's, uh, this app will be more useful when they include that built-in polygraph feature. <laughs> Those food scientists are busy. We're genetically modifying food. Well, what could go wrong there, right? Now we have apples that don't turn brown when you cut them. Hmm. Ending our long nightmare of unsightly Waldorf salads. I don't know, I've always thought of food turning brown as nature's way of saying, hey, you might not want to eat that. It's valuable information. We gotta turn this stuff onto the big problems in the world. The global warming, gotta get that fixed. But many people still don't believe in the global warming, which is understandable. Confusion is a symptom of heat stroke, right? <laughs> I've been trying to do my part for the environment. I bought some of those biodegradable trash bags. These are great, they disintegrate as I'm carrying them out to the curb. <laughs> Saves room in the landfill, because the trash doesn't make it to the landfill. It's safely blowing around my neighbor's yard. <laughs> Well, folks, that's my time. You give me a lot of fun. Thank you very much.
the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Megan Hanley is taking the stage when we return. Welcome okay. back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Our next performer, she is in the new web series, Seeking Sublet. So please make a, make a Gotham noise. Welcome for Megan Hanley. <laughs> here i'm glad you guys are here i'm glad you guys are out drinking uh i'll be honest i come from an irish catholic family so that's always been our big excuse for drinking we're like are you guys, are you guys irish or just alcoholics or, you're like either one it doesn't matter but that's always been our big excuse we're like ah we're irish that's why we're drunk erin go bra blackouts on christmas Woo! and then my family went to ireland and we were like oh shit we're not irish Whoops. <laughs> but we still celebrate St. Patrick's Day, right? Because it's a great holiday. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. You just go out. You have a good time. And I was out last year with one of my friends who's Puerto Rican, and he's wearing one of those shirts that says, Everybody's Irish on March 17th. And I was like, That's right, Jose. You are Irish. <laughs> this is beautiful. I'm like, we're bringing cultures together. This is amazing. But there's no way that that works out the other way around. There's no way I could show up to the Puerto Rican Day Parade in June <laughs> and be like, hey, everybody's Puerto Rican at the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Boom, boom, la casa, boom, boom, la casa. I would definitely get stabbed. <laughs> yeah. With somebody's penis. Uh, Weppa. <laughs> it would probably be fun. I'd probably get pregnant. Uh, they're really fertile, Puerto Ricans. It's actually big families, big families. It's actually becoming a problem. It's too much, too much. <laughs> A lot of my friends are having kids right now. A lot of my friends are pregnant. And it's exciting for them, but they don't come out to comedy shows anymore. They're like, oh, when's your show? Thursday? 10 o'clock. <sighs> it's a little late. It's a little... I don't know. That's not very convenient. That's not very convenient. I'm like, oh, you know it wasn't convenient for me? Your wedding. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> That's a New York crowd. That's a... I do that on the road, and they're like, what? That was my wedding. That was my wedding. I mean, I still went because there was an open bar. And I'll pretty much go anywhere with an open bar. <laughs> Woo, this is a drinking crowd. I like that. I don't know, some of you guys, I'm sure you've been invited to those weddings where there's no open bar. And the thing is, they don't tell you. So you get there, and they're like, oh, by the way, you have to pay for these drinks. You're like, oh, by the way, I need my envelope back. I'm gonna take 50 bucks out and cause a scene. This is on you, this is on you. you think you're saving money or you're gonna have to call an ambulance? Good luck, good luck. That was too far, all right. <laughs> I don't know. I think right now is the best time to have kids. I think it's the best time to have kids because of Facebook, right? You put those statuses up right away. Like I look at my friend's photos and I'm like, oh my God, matching outfits. They're so happy. Look at them, a year of blessing photo montage. This is amazing. Maybe I should have kids. And then I hang out with them in person and I'm like, this is not the same family. I saw advertised online. Like I think I'm being catfished. But like my girlfriends will have me over for like ladies night. And like when I was younger, ladies night was like crazy, wild, get drunk. Now my friends will be like, come over. We'll have a ladies night. We'll drink wine. We'll watch a movie. It'll be sad. <laughs> they don't say the sad part, but then you get there and you're like, oh, it's just gonna be us. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, that's so fun. Yeah, let's order sushi. 
Oh my God, you're selling jewelry now? Oh. Great. Out of control. The jewelry. I don't know what's going on with the jewelry parties. Like, I feel like women used to have Tupperware parties, but now we don't cook. <laughs> so it's like, go to my jewelry party. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. And the worst is I have friends that are making their own jewelry, which is so much worse, because my one friend is like, this next piece. I made this. I made this myself. I'm like, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Looks like shit. Like, who, who's buying this? It looks like a bunch of paper clips stuck together. And I know that's mean. I know that's judgmental. I feel like women, we can be very judgmental people. I don't even think we necessarily mean to be. I just think there's something in estrogen that we like file information away and we file information away and then we find out somebody's been talking about us behind our backs. And it just comes spewing out of nowhere. It's like, what'd she say? What? Who? Kathy? Oh, you mean fat Kathy with the fucked up eyebrows and the weird lip? Fat Kathy? What'd she say? What'd she say? <laughs> She's with me. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It wasn't Kathy, it was actually Deb. I'm like, I know, because Kathy's a sweetheart. <laughs> she never would have said that. She never would have said that. Get Manny Petty's next week. <laughs> it's so hard not to judge people, though. One of my roommates is obsessed with Harry Potter. Obsessed with Harry Potter. Uh, that's a little weird to woo. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. But she's obsessed. When the final movie came out, she was like, I am so excited for the final Harry Potter. I think I'm going to bring my magic wand. I was like, excuse me? She's like, my magic wand. I'm like, you are over 30 years old. I'm like, there's only one type of magic wand you should have, and it should not be around children. She goes, oh, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's homemade. I'm like, way worse. <laughs> But she loves to watch romance movies. She recently invited me over to watch The Vow, which I don't know if any of you guys have seen. Doesn't matter. I'll sum it up very quickly. It's Rachel McAdams, Channing Tatum. Yeah. They're a husband. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> He's doing okay. Uh, they're a husband and wife couple. They get in a horrible car accident. And then she wakes up in the hospital and she's like, doctor? And he's like, no, I'm your husband. And she's like, what? Husband? I don't remember having a husband. And then the whole movie is about them falling back in love and it's amazing, and they renew their vows. I'm like, I'm sorry, if I woke up in a hospital bed and Channing Tatum was like, I'm your husband, I'd be like, sold. <laughs> Done. No questions asked. I will hook up with you in this hospital bed. Immediately. Like, do people know we're together? Do they know we're together? What's up, Magic Mike? Facebook. Uh, uh. It's like, I don't remember who I am, but it must be pretty awesome. Because you are really good looking. And then somebody told me that movie's actually based on a real couple. I'm like, yeah, I'd like to see what they look like. Because maybe that's what happened. Maybe she woke up and he's like, I'm your husband. And she's like, yeah, I don't remember you. At all. Yeah, I'm gonna have to earn my love one day at a time. Start by doing the dishes. You can take out the recycling. That's on Tuesday. It's weird, I remember that, just not you. So weird. But the thing is, I don't, mind, I don't mind romance movies. Like, they're cheesy, but at least you know what you're getting yourself into. You know they're going to be ridiculous. What I can't stand are, like, the women discovering themselves movies, like Eat, Pray, Love. It's like, oh, I'm just on a journey. I'm just finding myself. But it's not. It's always about a guy. It's always about a guy. And along the way, it's like the first guy she meets is always amazing. Like, the very first guy. I'm like, that is not what happens. <laughs> In real life, uh, I went through a horrible breakup last year, and then the first guy I dated tried to choke me. <laughs> Not like that, like sexually. Uh, <laughs> here's what I learned from the situation. One, not into it, not into choking. But two, I can kind of see why some people are. Because when you think someone's trying to murder you, and then it turns out they're not, <laughs> things can only get better. <laughs> it's like, oh! You were just trying to get off. Well, then by all means, please go ahead, go ahead. Because one of us should, because I just shit myself. All right, I gotta go, guys. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Mike Faberman is taking the stage when we return.
you know what? Let's just keep it going. We're not going to stop now. He's on Showtime. Make some noise for Mike Feverman. You should have finished me off, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just gonna put my hair in cornrows this morning, found a crop circle. <laughs> All right, take it easy, fuckers. <laughs> Looks like I was wearing a burning yarmulke, doesn't it? <laughs> Any Jewish people here? No, they're home making money. All right. <laughs> I was raised in a very Jewish neighborhood. When I was younger, I went to the Jewish bakery. I ordered a baker's dozen. He gave me 11. <laughs> you know why Jewish people love America? Because it's a free country. <laughs> Too much, guys. Too much. Here's my impression of a Jewish molester. Can I sell you some candy, little boy? <laughs> really? I uh, dated a 27-year-old Japanese girl. We're very happy. We met on eBay, and uh, <laughs> she's home right now in her cage. And uh, <laughs> no, she's good. To put sushi by the door, she's good for like 10 days, bro. <laughs> Serious. Good sense of humor. I love to mess around with her, fuck around a little bit. Sometimes in the middle of sex, I'll pull out, I'll shoot it right here. She'll look up at me and go, why? <laughs> and I scream, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> and walk right out of the room. <laughs> That's right, folks. I gave her a Pearl Harbor necklace. <laughs> she didn't know that shit was coming either. <laughs> USA, USA. <laughs> She doesn't give me any head, which is just bullshit, you know? Ladies, give your boy some head, you know what I'm saying? She says it smells like shrimp. I'm like, dude, you're Asian. Put rice at the base and get to work, huh? Get it done. I told they wouldn't shower for a couple days. Give her some shrimp tempura, you know? <laughs> that shit's funny, bro. All day funny. I go on the road a lot, she gets very lonely, and uh, <laughs> no fucking clue what she's talking about, lonely. Got her some dogs, you guys dog lovers here? Yeah. Got her German Shepherd, beautiful, smart dog. The only problem is I'm Jewish, the dog's German, I think he's trying to fucking kill me, bro. <laughs> I'm in the shower, hear this thing giggling, you know? Walk by the oven, it try to push me in, it's fucked up, folks. I'm gonna have to kill this dog. <laughs> Thanks, four of you right here. <laughs> told my mother I'm not gonna marry a Jewish woman. She said she was beside herself. I told her that must have been annoying. <laughs> you guys starting to pick up on this shit or what? <laughs> Fucking assholes. <laughs> My girl says I look like a thumb. Do I look like a thumb? <laughs> See, that's fucked up. I'm all insecure about it. Sometimes I get off stage and people are like, hey, you did good, man. <laughs> like, you fucking mocking me, bro? <laughs> no one wants to be the thumb, the fat brother. <sighs> it's good to be out of the house, man. My house gets robbed all the time. It's a piece of shit. Now, whenever anyone's robbing me, I just put pantyhose on my head and pretend like I was there first. <laughs> Gave a homeless guy a bag of my old clothes the other day. He looks through them and goes, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Dude, what a dick, huh? This guy's wearing a FedEx box. Sir, an 18-year-old homeless kid that day, 18. Yeah, gave up a little bit early, huh, fuck face? <laughs> what, you got a C in English? It's over! <laughs> that shit's hard! 
going home to see the family. Family's all fucked up, you know. My cousin's boyfriend had problems with his hemorrhoids, so she's like, why don't you use the baby wipes? He goes in the bathroom, baby wipes, comes out 20 minutes later, he's like, my ass is burning. She goes in there, he was using Clorox bleach pads. Dude, how awesome is that? His ass must have looked like an albino's. Doctor said his ass was so clean you could eat out of it. So he had Sundays on a Monday. No one eats ass there, huh? I'm at the wrong fucking party. Right. Everyone here has an ugly friend, am I right? If you don't, it's probably you. My ugly buddy calls me up the other day, told me he had sex with two women at the same time, both of them over 400 pounds. Dude, how awesome is that? It's like being in one of those moonwalks where you're like, Here's where it gets disgusting. <laughs> Said as soon as he got him in the room, they immediately went down on each other. Dude, that's not a 69, that's a 6,996. <laughs> Seesaw style too, like. Imagine the smell in that room. <laughs> smell like a bag of salt and vinegar potato chips blew up. How do you describe that evening? Good food, good laughs, good God. <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, I'm already tired and shit. This is how out of shape I am. I'm a foodie, man. I can't stop eating. You know? you know you're fat when you go to the gym and you're doing sit-ups and a lady walks by, looks you right in the eyes and goes, for what? <laughs> Do you guys know why they call it extra virgin olive oil? It's because when you pour it in the pan, it just lays there. <laughs> oh, too clean for you guys? All right, I'll filth it up a bit. So a 16-year-old girl the other day, a pair of sweatpants said, juicy across her ass. So I bought a pair of sweatpants too. It said, meaty. <laughs> I stood right behind her, looked at her parents, was like, yeah. <laughs> Ladies, don't do shit to your body. We're looking. I saw a girl the other day had a tattoo on her lower back that said hottie and she had back fat. <laughs> Dude, that's not a good call. You know, some drunk guy is going to be like, <laughs> Are you shitting me? That's false advertisement. Hungry? Why not like sloppy? Oh, I'm sorry, ladies. Used to work in the restaurant business. Didn't work for a TGI Fridays. I worked for their competitor. Oh, fuck, it's Monday. Worked in the kitchen with 10 Mexican brothers. They used to call me the white back. And uh, I love Mexican men because they're little guys and they love big asses. So you just picture making love like. <laughs> oh, me gusta. <laughs> Look like a koala bear hugging a redwood, you know, like. <laughs> Had a gay boss. He told me he was haunted by a gay ghost in his house. Dude, how fucking gay is that? What, he haunt you from the closet at first? Came out late at night, was like, boo! Boo! Woke up, your room's all redecorated. Yeah. I got fired from that job. I thought it was a good reason. Young couple making out the table. That's disgusting. I don't want to see that shit. So here's a solution. You ever see two people making out in public? Makes you feel uncomfortable and you want them to stop? Just walk right up to them and go like this. Mm -mm. You guys are hot. Thank you very much. My name is Mike Favre. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City.
Clinton Jackson is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Well, all right. Ain't no point in stopping now. Our next performer has been on Comedy Central Presents Clinton Jackson. So, hey, make some noise for Clinton Jackson. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very nice of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am having a good time in town. I'm having a great day. I went out to breakfast this morning, ordered a large orange juice. I ain't bragging. I'm just saying I make that kind of cash. You gotta get the large orange juice because even that one's only this big. <laughs> right? You get the small, the waitress will just come by with some juice like. <laughs> you better be ready. <laughs> I've been trying to be healthier. My sister told me I should stop drinking milk. More specifically, she said, do you realize that human beings are the only creatures that continue to drink milk after they've been weaned? <laughs> I said, well, Paula, do you realize that human beings are the only creatures with cookies? I'm pretty sure that if cows could get a hold of some cookies, they'd milk themselves. Mm. I was going into the mall, and I saw a sign on top of a van that said, Stress Relieving Massage. You know what causes me a lot of stress? People trying to lure me into a van. <laughs> I can tell you how that massage will go 10 seconds into it, you pop up. Are we moving? <laughs> <laughs> Is it just me or when you go to the mall and you go to the department store and you see the woman working at the makeup counter, do you want to go up to her and say, excuse me, girlfriend, I believe you that you got all kind of makeup behind that counter, all sorts of colors and shades. I believe you that it's all back there. You didn't have to put it all on your face. <laughs> see, the ladies know what I'm talking about, right? I like when I like to see you see them. Like, ooh, girl, look at, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> huh? Oh, no, thank you, Miss Potato Head. I'm cool. I don't need your free tote bag. <laughs> right, sweetie, come on. There's nothing wrong with a little makeup, right? But if you walk around looking like you fell asleep with a mouthful of Skittles, <laughs> it's time to have that talk. <laughs> oh, ladies, ladies, ladies. I know what you like, your old buddy Clint Jackson, I know. I know you like getting that French manicure with the little white tips on there, hi. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. My wife been known to get it from time to time, me likey. <laughs> I don't understand when you get that on your feet, the little white tips, then it just looked like you clipped your toenails and glued the pieces back on. I mean, if that's the look you're going for, rock on, cover girl. I'm just telling you what it looks like to the casual observer. 
It used to just be too much makeup was the thing that we had to worry about. Now, ladies, you're going nuts with these tattoos all over you. Everywhere you look, there's tattoos. All right, we got it. You don't ever plan on being an old lady. We got it. You're going nuts with them all over the place. It used to just be like a little butterfly or something. You could hide it with a strap or not. <laughs> But some women want to be discreet, so they get a tattoo just on their foot. Often it's words. Often they're inspirational. I saw a lady, she had tattooed on her foot, there's always hope. <laughs> you know she thought she was doing the Lord's work when she got that tattoo. <laughs> like she's really going to get that call. Megan, Kelly's having a real hard time. We got to get over there. Where are your flip-flops? <laughs> she, she's at a funeral sitting right behind the sobbing widow. She's just like, I got this. Shaking her shoe off. <laughs> Foot comes over the shoulder. I get, my wife doesn't even wear her makeup, and I love that about her. She's beautiful just the way she is. She's, I love that about her. You know what I mean? That's my thing. Very cute, too. That's what I like about my wife. First, because she's small. That makes, that makes her real cute, too. My wife is five feet and a quarter inch. Yeah, I only tell you that quarter inch because she always says that. I'm five feet and a quarter inch. I don't know what she thinks people are going to do with that information. Welcome to the NBA. <laughs> Go easy on them. Very cute. I love her very much. You know what? I always enjoy that song, When a Man Loves a Woman. After I got married some 12 years ago, that song really started hitting me right in the numbers. You know, Percy laying that out. When a man loves a woman. And you're going, yeah, Percy, take it to church. Come on. Right? <laughs> And I'm talking about the Percy Sledge song, not that Michael Bolton atrocity that he tried to give us a while when a man needs a haircut, if you recall that offering. I'm talking about Percy laying it out there. And you go like, yeah, Percy, and she can do no wrong. You're like, yeah, Percy, it's on me. Mm. He'll sleep out in the rain. Excuse me? You're getting off track, Percy. That's... Not practical. Why would he make up stuff when there's enough stuff that you do that is good to sing about that real stuff that you do? When a man loves a woman, he will talk to the cat on the phone when he calls home. Because according to her, the cat misses you too. When a He will give her that last perfect bite of his hot dog. Even though she said she didn't want none at first. When a man loves a woman, he will drip dry after his shot while he is shaving cause she done inexplicably used up all the towels in the hotel Everybody together, come on. When a man he will keep on driving even though he is very, very tired and she offered to take over for a while. Cause he don't wanna tell her, ain't no way in the world I can sleep while you drive.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. All right, everybody. We only have 20 seconds. I want to make sure we do this right. Let's bring all of our comedians up off of the stage. Come on, make some noise, everybody. We did a great show tonight. Wow. Jeff Caldwell. Jeff Caldwell. Megan Hanley, Mike Feverman, and Clinton Jackson. Did you have a good time? If you had a good time, make some noise. <laughs> um, I love it, everybody. Tonight's show is dedicated to Robin Williams. Make some noise in the house for Robin, everybody. Look up and say goodbye, Robin. We love you. We love you, Robin. <laughs>